Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Hello, Mark, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Sana. Hi, Mark, how are you? Shall we get started? Yeah, yeah, sure. Indeed. Okay, great. I think enough people have joined as well. So let's just uh, start with today's session. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for attending today's session uh, from ELN, the eLearning Network. And the session is called Introduction to Awarding Bodies. Um, we're basically just going to give you um, a live question and answer with our training manager so you can get a better understanding of awarding bodies when you're shopping around for the courses that you need to do. So just a few brief ground rules uh, before we get started. So I will be moderating the questions in the chat. So keep writing your questions in the chat as soon as you think of them. I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Otherwise, we'll open the floor to Mark at the end of the presentation. And uh, at the end, if there are any questions that you specifically have for Mark, obviously he will be answering them for you. So uh, what we're going to cover in today's session is going to be a brief introduction as well as the different awarding bodies. What is an awarding organization or an awarding body? How would you choose an awarding body? What is the difference? And the benefits of studying a course accredited by Pearson at Excel. Uh, their qualifications are also known as BTEX uh, or NOCN. Um, and then we'll do a live uh, Q&A for about 10 minutes at the end. So just to give you an introduction to Mark, he is our uh, training manager here at ELN, and he is also one of our most highly rated tutors, um, pretty much uh, five star, I guess. Um, he handles the level five diploma in education and training, as well as all the uh, level four internal quality assurance and external quality assurance units. Um, he is obviously involved in the other qualifications as well. He has over 23 years of experience um, in, in various countries across the world. And uh, of course, he's very highly qualified, as you can see on your screen. So without any further uh, delay, uh, I'll hand it over to uh, Mark himself so that he can get started with, your, with the presentation. Good afternoon, okay. folks. I hope you're all doing OK. Uh, Thank you for the intro, Sana. Uh, so over the next 10 to 15 minutes, we're going to uh, briefly go over and make you more aware of what an awarding body is and how they're involved within the actual training process, as it were. Uh, and of course, at the end, as, as Sana did mention there, any questions that you may have, uh, we'll, we'll certainly do our best, best to answer. Okay. So... Basically, an awarding body, uh, I mean, there are different terms used as uh, awarding body, awarding organizations, but essentially uh, they're, they're all used to describe the role of an organization which not only designs and develops qualifications, they can also deliver, but, but generally they're responsible for the awarding of uh, recognized learning outcomes from qualifications within different sectors of different levels. Uh, throughout the UK and abroad. Uh, these organizations can be registered charities, okay? They can be chartered institutes, commercial businesses. They can be basically anyone who's got a, obviously a, a vigil interest in, in the training and uh, the training words. So, so really the, the application to be an awarding body is quite strict. Uh, people and organizations do have to meet rigid criteria and they are quality assured themselves uh, quite regularly and quite strictly as well. Uh, so I did mention they're experts in developing uh, high quality qualifications. And these qualifications obviously are, are required by learners uh, to further a career or just to sit the needs of their own employers in their current position. Uh, what they ultimately do is they approve training centers, such as ELN, uh, and basically work with them to ensure that high quality uh, qualifications are delivered. And basically the learner receives everything they should receive in terms of uh, delivery assessment uh, that they paid for. And obviously quality assurance is a big key to, to the warden body's uh, output. And the training provider has to ensure they meet the rigid criteria of the awarding body themselves. 
there are over 160 awarding bodies only in the UK. Okay, obviously there's there's a lot more than that outside of the UK as well. Okay, but within the UK specifically, what we're talking about today, uh, they're regulated by one of the public regulators who are responsible for governing qualifications. Within England, a soft qual. Uh, within Wales, it's qualification Wales. Scotland is SQA. And finally, within Northern Ireland, a CCEA. Again, just a bit about accredited and non accredited qualifications. Uh, generally, you'll find an awarding body delivers accredited qualifications. So, hence, hence the name accredited. They're an accredited by a professional body. Uh, they do count towards professional qualifications, which in turn can obviously lead to registration with a professional body. Uh, registration with professional body, you know, can lots of, of benefits uh, in terms of your own career uh, and a progression within an organisation as well. Okay, so. Uh, some examples can be uh, with an SET, Society of Education and Training, uh, IOSH in terms of uh, health and safety. So again, there, there are loads of uh, pluses if you're studying an accredited course, so it can lead to a professional membership, uh, which in turn can, can evident your, your skills within a, a certain sector or cross sector. Uh, the right professional qualifications and registrations can help make you more desirable to employers and clients. So as I mentioned there, uh, having uh, a professional qualification such as we offer at ELN, uh, which will lead to that professional qualification, or sorry, membership, can, you know, will look very smart on your CV and obviously will attract employers and clients alike. In terms of choosing the warden body, uh, within Ely and ourselves, we have got Pearson EDXL, which is perhaps the, the market leader uh, in awarding bodies. Okay, uh, NOCN as another UK uh, body as well, and finally we've got OAL or Occupational Awards Limited. Now, all three of these awarding bodies, uh, you know, ultimately they do the same thing. Okay, they just got various degrees of. Uh, should I say uh, credibility, but ultimately they are all the same. There's, there's no difference, for example, uh, on your CV if a qualification has been completed or certified by Pearson as opposed to NOC. And there's no difference. Um, no employer does make any, 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 any uh, distinguishing uh, decision about those two awarding bodies. I, I can promise you that that's it's just uh, where they are within the marketplace. So Pearson. Uh, UK's largest awarding body, and they have more than 3.4 million students who study qualifications worldwide. Uh, also, apart from professional qualifications, they do market exam scripts. Uh, you've probably heard about them in the news recently involved with GCSEs and A-levels. Uh, so they do get, they are tied up quite a lot uh, around government processes and procedures. Uh, so they're a massive organisation, as I say, who have got far reaches within the UK and obviously abroad as well. Uh, they do offer uh, in a broad range of academic and vocational qualifications. I mentioned there they're on uh, Pearson EDXL. Uh, EDXL as it were, uh, their academic and general qualifications which Pearson offer and they include GCSEs, A-levels, international GCSEs, NVQs and functional skills. BTEC stands for Business and Technology Education, okay? And uh, basically they're designed as a specialist work-related qualification and are available in a range of sectors such as businesses, engineering, and ICT. And finally, LCCA, or London Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Again, there are qualifications which Pearson offer uh, based around business, marketing, and finance. Okay, so that's where those three uh, branches, as it were, of Pearson uh, delve into in terms of qualifications. Within the ELN, uh, education and training we offer, okay, for Pearson, and the award certificate and a diploma. 
the uh, quality assurance, both internally and externally. Internally, we do all the uh, awards and certificate. And external quality assurance, we currently offer the award. And in some cases, we can recommend to complete the uh, certificate. Okay, but again, that's obviously another chat for another day. Uh, assessment qualification, we offer all the various units of the assessor, assessor qual through Pearson EDXL. And one thing vital to remember is uh, any qualification that we give to learners outside of the UK will be certified by Pearson. Okay. NOCN, or National Open College Network, and again, they have got a range of regulated vocational and technical qualifications and fellowships which vary across several sectors, okay? And these sectors include education and training, management and productivity, security, and retail sales and marketing. So they do, again, vary across several sectors uh, within the UK. Again, within uh, ELN, we do offer the education and training award and certificate, the IQA awards and certificate, external quality assurance award and assessors awards and certificate as well. So generally the same as Pearson, albeit not a diploma from education and training, but generally everything else NOCN offer as well. And finally, in terms of security, we, we do offer the delivery of conflict management award. Occupational awards limited. And these deal primarily uh, in a number of sectors, but specifically with ELN as health and safety. Okay, but they also do retail, uh, trade supplier and warehousing, business leadership and management and food and drink. So again, they do uh, have a far reaching uh, qualifications across several sectors within the UK. Again, within ELN, we offer the diploma, uh, level five diploma in occupational health and safety and the level three award and managing contractors compliance with health and safety. So primarily health and safety based at the moment. So which one should you choose? Okay, so really and truly, if you're not completing a health and safety qualification, the only difference between them is the brand preference, that is all, okay. The course content, the delivery, the tutor support, the assignment requirements, both theory and practical, all remain exactly the same. So what I'm saying is there's no difference in assessment criteria across the awarding bodies. The qualifications are essentially the same. That is brand preference. As I mentioned there, if not complete in health and safety, the only other difference is at times uh, they require to process your certificate once you complete the qualification. At ELN, we're quite proud in the fact that we have direct claim status with all the rewarding bodies, which basically means the process and procedures are quite quick. And one job that an awarding body does, obviously, as I mentioned before, is quality assurance. So though they don't quality assure all our learner portfolios, they do sample uh, um, across the board from time uh, to time, okay? Obviously, main direct claim status basically means that they trust our own internal quality assurance standards and then all they're doing is uh, occasionally sampling just to make sure our standards are, are yep continue to be benchmarked but are continued to be completed as well. On terms of the uh, process times okay currently with NOCN it can take three to four weeks and that's going through the internal processes through to the actual process of certification by the awarding body, okay? In terms of Pearson EDXL, we're talking six to eight weeks. Now those are the longest possible times of wait. And, and generally, by and large, they're not our uh, timelines. They're timelines specifically set by the awarding body. And again, if you do go on to do qualifications in different sectors, perhaps using different awarding bodies, you'll find this is a common trait. Uh, again, depending on the level of qualification you do also. And as mentioned before, if our international learners are based outside of the UK, Pearson has offered for the qualifications we have. Okay. 
Well, thank you very much, folks. It was a, a short overview of the warden bodies and what they offer and what we offer at EOM. And uh, by all means, we can, we can get stuck into any questions that you may have at this stage. Sana? That's, yeah, that's great, Mark. Thank you. Uh, so I only have one question so far. So if the rest of you have any other questions in mind, please feel free uh, to type them in the chat. Um, so basically, um, oh, so I have another one. Hold on. What's the press process for adding a new qualification to the framework or how does this work? Uh, it's quite a long process and that type of process can take between six to 12 months and can be quite expensive as well. The process for devising your own qualification, you obviously need to do your homework. Uh, you need to research and basically what you want to uh, collect together is a, a specification as such, a syllabus, a breakdown of assessment criteria, which is cross-referenced to what you want to achieve. So for example, uh, within first aid, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, various qualifications and offer these days. Most want to achieve the same thing at different levels, but Ultimately, you need to put your own spin on it and then sell it beyond that. And the greatest expense from devising your own qualification is actual uh, selling it, not selling it. Yeah, well, selling it to an awarding body who are then prepared to, to use it uh, you know, on your behalf as such. With that said, if you have it accredited, that means it needs to go on the RQF framework. Okay, and again, uh, depend on where a qualification is being delivered, whether it's in England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, you have to then also approach the uh, regulators to, to get it uh, passed by them as well. Okay, so that's basically, again, a short insight of what the process is, but it's a long process. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite detailed, uh, quite a lot of our hurdles to jump, and it can be expensive as well. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Mark. Um, uh, there's another question. So if uh, somebody's employer has a particular awarding body, let's say uh, the employer uh, is accredited by edXL, um, does it matter if they get certified by NOCN themselves or any other awarding body? No, no, not at all. I say all the qualifications are exactly the same. There's no difference at all, regardless of awarding bodies. Okay, brilliant. Um, so one question is, what are the costs involved in using ELM? In terms of what costs? Um, uh, I'm not exactly sure. So the person who asked this, would you mind just clarifying? Do you mean um, uh, for, okay, so she's saying for a college, what are the requirements to use ELM? Uh, do you mean as in uh, purchasing courses from us? Because or is that for ELN to deliver courses for your college? Oh, to purchase courses. Okay, so I think uh, she's asking about course prices. Yeah, obviously our, our course prices are on our, our website. Uh, now just again, uh, I'm not sure as what you mean, but bear in mind we're a training provider and not an awarding body as such. I'm sure you know that. So all our prices, uh, the courses we deliver, you'll, you'll find on our website. Brilliant. And we do have uh, group discounts in case if it's a college putting we through yeah. uh, multiple staff, then you can just uh, inquire at info at eln.io and they can get you a package. Okay, thank you. Next question. Are certain awarding bodies have certain expertise in different areas and are the costs the same? Yes, certain awarding bodies do uh, specialize in certain sectors. Uh, there are awarding bodies who specialize in security, or awarding bodies specialize in first aid across a number of sectors. As I mentioned, OAL is another example. But for an awarding body to, to be a viable business, what you're finding these days is that they're, they're taking more sectors on board in terms of offering a very, you know, varying types of qualifications so they can make their business successful. After all, that's what they are. So, Specific award bodies for specific sectors, singular sectors are getting fewer and fewer because they do have to make money in today's uh, economy, as it were. Uh, Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. 
so we have another one. What other methods are there to recognize qualifications? Is there a difference to accredited, endorsed, certificated as CPD? There are companies who advertise online that are CPD uh, endorsed as such. Uh, my personal advice, so my advice to you is, if you're going to do a qualification, uh, it's accredited. Okay. If you want that qualification to perhaps progress you within your career, uh, within the organization, uh, in terms of CPD, you could, you could uh, convert the number of guided learning hours you've spent on the course, which would go onto your CPD log. Uh, all other types of courses apart from accredited, you mentioned non-accredited, okay, so basically non-accredited courses are fine, or some of them are excellent content, but again, it really depends what you want from the end result. Uh, you, you may find unaccredited courses will not perhaps get you that position or, or, or job that you wish to get. Uh, certainly, if it's accredited and it's relevant, well then that's more of a chance Okay, I hope that sort of makes sense, but they're CPD, non-accredited courses, which are great. They're great for training, great for CPD work, but in terms of uh, climbing a ladder professionally, accredited qualifications and, uh, would, would be the, the avenue to go. I hope that answers the question. Uh, yep, that person has replied with a thank you, so thank you, Mark. Um, so the next question is, are there different rules for private colleges or private providers than public providers? No, uh, basically whatever organization you're in, it really depends what qualification you require. The awarding bodies, you know, you know they, they go across a myriad of different organizations to, to certify. So. No, there's, there's no real uh, difference between. It just depends what the organization requires in terms of qualifications and in terms of what award and body they should go for. Uh, there's quite a good uh, website uh, if you go on Google and it's a federation of award and bodies. And what this is, is a basically all loads 160, probably more now, uh, award and bodies within the UK and Northern Ireland have, have registered. It's like a big membership a big club of uh, awarding bodies and on there you'll find a list of all the awarding bodies who've registered with the federation you'll you'll see policies procedures uh that's quite a good resource as well if you want to sort of uh, check it out it's quite a good one to to look at okay thank you mark uh, i was able to find the link uh, online so i've also posted it in the chat so right. if you are interested please check the chat there's a link to the federation of awarding bodies it's awarding.org.uk um so i have uh, one final question um uh, is there any difference so if you are an uh, iqa in an organization um who is awarded you know who use multiple awarding bodies um do you need to be aware of different requirements for each awarding body for the, or do you need to have different practices for each no, awarding body? No, uh, all the awarding bodies have to meet the very strict criteria of Ofqual, SIA, SQA, qualification of wheels. Depends, it really depends where you're delivering the qualifications, okay, where the awarding body is based. So they have to meet that criteria from Ofqual, for example. So all the criteria are exactly the same. So being an IQA, uh, multiple awarding bodies does not matter whatsoever. There's no difference again at all. There's no different process. Internal processes may be slightly different, but generally, no, there's no difference whatsoever. They all have to meet that benchmark, which for example, off qual set. Yeah, I mean, uh, off of that question, I was just thinking about ELN and is there anything different that we do between uh, the same qualifications for Pearson and NOC, and I don't think that there is. Um, so, there, accepting... Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Sorry, Sana, I interrupted. Uh, no, I, I mean, certainly there's some quirks between award and bodies, but generally they're, they're quality assuring. Um, you know, they have to make sure that they're ticking the boxes that the regulators want, you know. Uh, yeah, there's some wee funny niggles here and there, but it's nothing that's... Uh, 
Yeah, exactly. exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, they're all regulated by Ofqual, and the qualifications actually come from Ofqual, and the framework yeah. and everything comes from Ofqual. So, yeah, brilliant. Okay, uh, okay. Another question. So, you can complete a Kava IQA with one awarding body, and basically, that's going to be accepted by all of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Uh huh. Uh, obviously, make sure you do your homework with the training provider first. Okay, the training provider needs to be uh, obviously registered with the awarding body. That's the key, and the qualification you get should be on the framework. Okay, so that's neither here nor there who it's awarded by. No problem whatsoever. Yeah, and I think, uh, Mark, I mean, if you want to use your own example, I mean, you've got qualifications from what, say, let's say, for example, Pearson, but you are an external verifier yourself for mm -hmm. different awarding bodies. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I work for three other awarding bodies as well. Uh, and again, it's all the exact same, uh, exact same uh, processes, qualifications. There's no, there's no difference at all. That's just the name, to be honest. Hello. Okay. Break up there. Um, I'm not sure if there's a question. Me. Sorry, the, the signal's broken up there, I think. Uh, can you repeat that oh, question? Sorry. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Just before it was completely broken there. Can, can you repeat that question, please? Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I was just saying that there was just a comment. I'm not sure if there's a question in there. Um, Elon was recommended to me from a Pearson E visit ref functional skills. So I was just asking the person, uh, you know, if there is a specific question in there, like are, oh, are okay. they asking about functional skills or... And he's, but it's good to know that ELN was recommended by an EV. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So I think uh, we're up for time. And I also think that's it for the questions. So thank you everyone for being here. Um, I really hope all your questions were answered to your satisfaction. Otherwise, you can always email us at info at ELN.io. I've also put that in the chat. And thank you, Mark, for uh, sharing all those um, nuggets uh, of wisdom with us and, and uh, for clarifying all our concepts about the awarding bodies. Uh, it was very helpful. Um, and thank you all for being here. Okay, thank you, so we can just sign off. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.